This presentation contains research uh, for dissertation thesis classification of Dubrovnik historic roof tiles Kanalica. So it deals with the research and process of making a glossary for Dubrovnik historic roof tiles Kanalica, dating from the time after the earthquake in 1667 to the time of the closure of the factory in Kupar in 1914. The paper contains research conducted for the project Dubrovnik Roofs, Documentation and Glossary which deals with the historic development and significance of the, the roof tiles Kanalica for Dubrovnik and its surroundings. The aim of the project is to raise awareness of the public and institutions about the difference between the historic and recent Kanalica. In this sense, the classification of different types of historic roof tiles co uh, collected during 2019 and 20, with the help of the Society of Friends of Dubrovnik Antiquities will be presented. Roof tiles Kanalica used in Dubrovnik and the wider Dubrovnik area consist of two half cylinders that are concave and convex in shape and have different variations. The first finds of these roof tiles originated in Byzantine and uh, Greece. In the Croatian coastal area, Kanalica has a centuries old tradition of yellow gold to bright red roofs and is still a symbol of Adriatic cities. Previously, terracotta roofs were limited to sacral buildings. In the 13th century, their application spread mainly in cities, but was initially limited to the upper social classes. In the 14th and 15th centuries, cities took the lead in expanding the heap as a roof covering uh, and mass production began. For the production of roof tiles in Dubrovnik was excavated under the settlement in Kupari, a place about 10 km south of Dubrovnik, at so-called Rupa site, Kuparskayama is also a popular name. Until the beginning of 20th century, the Bronic roof tiles were produced in a factory in Kupari. During this period, when the Count Kan Kaboga was the owner of the factory, production flourished and steam technology was introduced. This postcard from 1919 shows the two chimneys, so it is assumed that the factory had at least two ceramic furnaces indicating on the size of the production. Just before the beginning of the First World War, production was stopped, Kuparskayama was buried and the factory was sold. With demand for the production of uh, roof tile canalets in large quantities occur occurs after a series of natural disasters and the homeland war. Renovations of the roof, uh, roofs began in 1993 and UNESCO and the Institute uh, for Reconstruction of Dubrovnik demanded that uh, Dubrovnik panorama remain recognizable. It was insisted that the new roof tiles have the same structure, color and shape as the historic ones. The company Zagorka produced Kanalica Dubrovnik and Libertas in two colors, ochre and red, which you can see on the figure four. And by unevenly mixing these two colors, an attempt was made to achieve the effect of aging. By comparing the images, it can be seen that the aging effect is not achieved. Only some units uh, still have preserved part of the original roof tiles for which Dubrovnik is famous, due to increased amount of work related to the reconstru reconstruction of the old town, requirements of UNESCO and the Institute for the Reconstruction of Dubrovnik were only partially met. So, preservation as a science regards the object as a united uh, form of, of an object. This also implies the need for tile preservation and view of the object in all its faces, processes and properties. Fifth facade should be considered as all other architectural, architectural parts of the object. The Veronic uh, has a large number of different historic roof tiles whose origin has not been determined. Each type of historic roof tile has special characteristics and in order to determine the distribution of certain types, it is necessary to make a classification. On figure 6, we see an example of roof renovation where different historic roof tiles were used as upper ones, while the recent tiles were used in lower positions. Dubrovnik was known all over the world for its fifth facade until the early 1990s, with its unique roof tiles, Kanalica, whose colors leave a special impression on the visitor. This overall impression is of great importance for the preservation of heritage, as the roof terracotta is part of the authentic panorama of Dubrovnik and uh, other historic cities.
Canalizza has the shape of a semi-cylindrical tube that con conically widens on one side, the upper part being narrower than the lower part. According to oral tradition, the shape comes from the process of its shaping over the thighs. Historic roof tiles indicate very porous surface, surface structures. The various additives and organic impurities found in original clay used to make a historic roof tiles result in capillary porous and rough surface with many dents in the surface structure. Historic roof tiles canalitza have a natural color palette with an infinite range of its gradations. Color, colors range from yellow gold to bright red shades. The color of fired roof tiles depends on their chemical composition, fire temperature level and atmosphere. Uneven raw materials, salts, uneven drying, different temperatures and sulfur containing fuels are cited as the cause of different colors. Longevity of the roof tiles canalica is well known to the exposure of roofs in Dubrovnik to adverse weather conditions and salts. On the figure 8, we see a strong south wind that floods the walls and roofs. The aging process caused by weather and environmental influences allows patination of porous surfaces without changing the properties of the material. Physical, chemical and biological processes are involved in this aging process. Overlaying contaminants as well as biological organisms are an important contribution to the appearance of historic roof tiles. These microorganisms can, can't attach to modern roofs, roof tiles due to the non-porous material and smooth surface. This leads to a different rates of aging and different appearances. The old tiles are getting older, while the modern ones remain almost the same. Uh, manual production of historic canalica includes the following steps. The work surface is covered with coarse sand and frame is then placed on the prepared surface in which the piece of very soft water-rich clay is inserted. Clay is stretched by hand in order to fill the whole frame and the excess is removed by hand. Manual, su manual surface shaping or flat wooden tool semi-manual surface shaping. In the case of semi-manual shaping, the surface is more regular with lines left by wooden tool, while in the case of manual shaping, the surface is uh, somewhat more irregular. The frame is raised from the working surface. It is being separated from the clay, which falls on the negative form, taking the shape of the roof tile. The surface is smooth again and together with the negative is moved to the place intended for drying. The negative is immediately extracted so that the modeled clay is left without support. Because of, uh, the narrower part dries faster, hand-shaped roof tiles are usually slightly distorted. Industrial production of roof tiles uh, so the ex excavate, excavated pieces of clay pass through a machine that crumbles and unites the mass. For industrial production, a solid and compact mixture with a small proportion, proportion of water is used. Such a mass further passes through metal frames of semicircular shapes, that uh, taking the form of a continuous semicylinder. Mo moving along the strip, metal wires cut the shape of the roof tile. The clay form this way travels further as the excess material is separated by rollers. The ro uh, roof tiles are then placed on the shelves from where after a period of drying, they are taken to a kiln where, where they go through a firing process. Roof tiles produced this way have a regular shape. The lower water content of the raw material results in minor curvature irregularities. The classification aims to determine the possibility of uniting objects into a small number of groups of similar specimens. During 2019 and 20, Canalica roof tiles were collected from different parts of the Dubrovnik and its surroundings by DPDS. The initial, the initial research of the roof tiles was done including measuring the length, width, height, wall thickness, determining the bending angle and measuring the weight of the tiles. By observing their surface, conclusions were made about the method of production and the type of additives used in the raw materials. Furthermore, the shape of the roof tiles with all the irregularities and errors that occurred during the manufacturing process was observed and photographs of the surface structure were taken with light microscopic device. The approximate firing temp temperature was determined by the ringing sound that was produced by tapping on the tile. Despite the differences, it is possible to make grouping, uh, groupings according to common characteristics. Historic roof tiles were numbered randomly from 1 to 38. 
Representative samples were selected according to the color of the clay, the variety, decorations, dimensions, and method of production in order to include as many characteristics of a particular type. Their main determinant is their color, followed by decoration of the surface. After measuring all the collected samples of roof tiles, large variants variants in dimensions were found. They were classified according to smaller, medium and larger dimensions. Vari variations in shape were also covered as well as surface finishing and manufacturing methods, manual or industrial. The historic roof tiles were arranged according to the following groups. Type 1A, smaller in size, red tiles with yellow coating. Type B, medium sized red tiles. Type C, larger in size uh, of red color. Uh, 2A, medium sized yellow tiles. 2B, larger in size yellow tiles. Type 3, smaller in size yellow color with a specific twister, twisted end. And type 4, medium sized yellow with uh, industrial production. So similarities and differences between the identified types. A common feature for all the groups is the porosity of the additive rich material. All isolated specimens have uh, additives in form of smaller or, or and larger stones, pores formed by combustion of organic materials with variations in the, the dimensions depending on various factors and irregularities caused by the presence of calcium carbonate. So the purest specimens would be uh, of subgroup 2B and the roof tile type 4. The color of the tile is the first criterion for the div div division and, it's and it varies from light yellow to dark red. Uh, type 1 are red in color with the subtype 1A that has uh, yellow coating and uh, types 2, 3 and 4 are yellow colored. Type 1A differs from other groups not only by the coating but also by the imprinted decoration, which you can see in Table 3. In addition to being present in a large number of specimens, it, is, it occupies a significant part of the tile surface. The existence, existence of decorations is also determined in Type 1B, where they occupy a smaller surface area and is present on only one specimen. Dimensions of the roof tiles range from 39 cm for the type 3 to 54.5 cm for the subgroup 1C. Tiles of similar lengths are grouped together. All groups have a difference in length around 1 cm. The shape of each roof tile is different due to the curvature created in the drying process. In general, the cross section of the profile is characterized by the relatively flat upper line of the tile. The only group of different uh, shape is type 3 with an authentic finish in the wider part that forms a special curve around. All collected specimens are stable, indicating firing temperature was at least above uh, 600 degrees Celsius. It is known that the historical roof tiles canalitza were fired at a temperature about 900 degrees, which gives them a porous structure and enables resistance to weathering. Starting from this assumption, roof tiles uh, with the son sonorous and dull sounds were distinguished. In addition to the sounds, the firing temperature is also indicated by the degree of surface corrosion. Based on that, after the classification, it, is, it can be said that subgroups 1A and 1C have the dullest sound, while groups 2B and 4 have the clearest ringing sound. This thesis uh, is only a part of the work required for the project Dubrovnik Roofs. Any reflection on this topic, research or discussions are equally important because the they contribute the, uh, to the preservation of the otherwise neglected part of Dubrovnik heritage. This dissertation was preceded by many unpublished, re unpublished researches done my, by my mentor, Christina, and many uh, are yet to follow. The Dubrovnik Roofs project has been in development for years, but it is still at the beginning because under every ele elevated roof tile, new complications arise and with it comes the need to deepen the research. Thank you for your attention.